The Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, two months later, is the biggest piece of... It's the biggest piece of greatness that I've seen in quite some time on the Galaxy S24 Ultra being really refined over some previous editions. And two months later, Nick here helping you to master your technology. We're going to talk about why that is. Let's begin by talking about two months later with its superb, and I mean superb, battery life. Why I say superb is because, you know, Samsung always has big batteries and they always have, you know, pretty good battery life overall, but the Galaxy S24 Ultra takes it up a notch with its One UI optimizations and having a super large battery, pretty similar to S23 Ultra though. More efficient Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor means the battery I never had an issue getting through a full day. Even the standby is pretty good, but really where I notice it to be really strong is under actual usage. You also have plenty of different battery modes you can use like basic, adaptive, and maximum. But overall, I just find it to be incredibly good in this area. Also, it charges faster than my iPhone 15 Pro Max, not anywhere near my OnePlus 12, but still fast. Also, it does reverse and wireless charging, so the overall experience of charging using the battery is A1. It's been really good two months later. This phone, I think, is the king of the premium feel. Now, while it's not gonna be the right size for everyone, some people won't like the rectangular look, and if you didn't like this before, you're not gonna like it now. Um, but overall, it's got a really smooth, nice back. The titanium build is quite nice. And while some people do prefer a shinier metal or something like that, like a stainless steel or maybe even the polished aluminum of the past, this definitely resists fingerprints while at the same time feeling premium. And this one is kind of weird because it's 232 grams, so it's quite heavy, but it feels light without a case, but it's heavy, but light. I don't know how to describe it. It's a weird feel. It kind of feels like the weight is distributed well across this body. And two months later, I find myself thinking, well, this is not too heavy, but it's not light either. I do find the width of it and just the sheer stature of this phone the past two months to be quite cumbersome sometimes. So I found myself thinking, I want to go back down to my S24 Plus or a regular S24 after using this for extended periods, like a full week straight. Um, sometimes I'm just kind of missing those more comfortable sizes. So if you even are on the fence about you want a comfortable size phone, this one I would probably pass up, honestly. But if you're like, nope, that's not a problem for me. I love those big, huge phones. You'll love this product. Okay, so two months later with the display, I absolutely adore this display. It basically does everything I need it to do, and it does it in a very nice premium way. Now, first thing is first, I wanna mention something that this phone does that pretty much no Samsung phone before it has been doing, and that is being easy on the eye with their updated PAWM refresh. They changed this hurts on here, and it's just better. It doesn't hurt your eyes ever. Also, if you like a more natural tone, this display definitely employs that. So this display to me is better than previous Samsung phones for looking at it a lot of hours, reading a lot and stuff like that. However, if you're used to the deep saturated looks of the past or the deeply colorful looks, I think you're going to be disappointed with this panel. Even with their vivid mode update, it kind of just boosts the color more. Um, and it definitely looks quite vivid, don't get me wrong, but it has still has, it still retains that natural look. And if Samsung, if you're watching this video, I'm not complaining. What I'm saying is people who really preferred a deeply saturated display probably will like your S23 Ultra more. But personally, I like the changes they made. The, it's a very accurately tuned panel. It um, does give you the option to go vivid. And it also is very, very sharp, like text is super sharp. Also, having the flat panel makes it a more practical experience day to day. So you don't have to worry about, you know, things slipping off the edges or accidental presses. It's just a really good experience. And you can go both sides to go back and forth. Also, the keyboard is very big. There's a number row on here. So if you are looking for a Nick Ackerman video, it's going to be very easy to type. And you could even type the number of the phone you're looking for right there up at the top. And we'll be able to find some content on the S24 Ultra. Um, very smooth in YouTube as well. No glitches or hangs there. The 120 Hertz is buttery smooth. The punch hole doesn't really get in the way. It does rotate. It has that versatility. Um, a lot of phones don't have this. The Pixels have it, but not all Android phones have that. You have the ability to split on edge panels, pop views, 
Then also you can use this S Pen to go ahead and draw on this display. I mean, this thing is loaded. Like every single thing you could think of, this is the best display I feel like you can get on a slab smartphone. The only thing that's probably better than this is maybe like a foldable display like the OnePlus Open if you want like a wide, long display. Um, but for slab styles, this thing is freaking amazing on the S24 Ultra. Not to mention that it also has some of the highest brightness and you don't have to wait for the sun to hit it. Click the extra, extra brightness mode and they let you take full advantage of its maximum potential. I don't ever use that really because I'm not trying to drain my battery prematurely, but they also have adaptive color tone and it even goes further. So let's go to settings and let me show you how it goes further. If we go to display here and we scroll down, you'll see um, this adaptive color tone um, but if you go into this motion smoothest, you could take that off. You can also turn on eye comfort shield. And when you turn that on, they have this enhanced comfort mode. And when you put that on, it could take off some colors as well that might be too searing for your eyes at nighttime. So it just gets better and better. There's so much. The display, I had to go on and on about it because it has been two months later. Superb. Anti-glare is just a cherry on top as well. Once you see anti-glare, the other displays just don't look as good as the S24 Ultra. So this is the king, I think, of display right now. Okay, so you see this right here? We're gonna talk AI. This has been a huge plus. This wallpaper right here was generated by AI, so don't ask me for it because it's generated on the phone. It's not a link I could share. It's just right there on the phone, it was generated. So that, that wallpaper right there was generated by AI. The AI features on here are really setting this phone apart. It really makes the you know iPhone look kind of like dated right now. So if you're looking for AI right now, advanced intelligence, artificial intelligence, the Samsung is already offering it. They also am already bringing it to the older phones. So even some older Samsungs are now further ahead than current Apple devices. So really like this. And this video is not about Apple, but I just have to point this out. I've really been enjoying um, this, just this whole AI stuff, it's really quite cool um, that it's built in versions of the keyboard in, in the way of the phone, the translation, um, the Samsung internet giving you simple summaries and stuff like that. Uh, Google circle search, so you can basically circle search anything on the display. It's all here and um, it's pretty neat. Okay, so here's a picture I took on the S24 Ultra. We're gonna talk about the camera. Now, the colors are definitely more toned down this year. They're not overly saturated, anything like that. But they're still, these photos um, still tend to look a little over sharpened, as in like there was a sharpness filter applied to them. I kind of like it though, because I always add some sharpness to my post processing. Um, anyway, not everybody will though. So if you don't like a super sharp photo, you like it a little bit more raw looking and you want to make your own tweaks, you might not prefer this, but overall, the camera is super versatile and it takes some of the sharpest, best photos I've seen ever on a camera. You can even, look at this. There was a plane and it's it looks like it's going into the building, but it's not, it's behind, way behind. But it was even able to pick up that little plane all the way back there. I'm about maybe a good four miles, well, probably not that long, maybe about two to three miles from the skyline photo um, where I'm standing when I took this shot. and. Look at the detail. You can even see the cloud in the fog that kind of is near the skyline right there. It's really incredible, the, the kind of detail you can get. Look at this. So I'm standing over here, and I see this bird. I'm probably a good, I'm going to say 20 feet from this bird right here. And I can show you some different zoom shots and how you can get really close. So if you're into like nature and photos like that where you zoom in on animals, you're really going to like that as well. Heading into the actual camera itself, the versatility of this setup is insane. It really can please so many users. You like photos, it can please you because it has photography and expert raw modes, and you can do pro photos and stuff like that. So really cool with the pro mode over here. Um, you like video, they got you covered there as well with the ability to change the different mic settings, holds it in UHD 60, different aperture priorities as well as you'll see different um, white balance modes. And the cool thing about this is if you set this up once and it's like where you keep your phone for video, it will stay in this mode so you can continue to just come back. Like it won't change until you change it. Pretty cool. Also, you have dual recording video, food modes if you're a traveler. Again, the amount of people this camera can please is incredible. 
a lot. It's ba basically pretty much anyone and what they need to do. There is a feature, a mode on here for you. And it also does that with incredibly high specification cameras. So no matter what you like to do, each one of them is going to provide you a good experience on here. That's the cool thing. The zoom is crazy too. If you're into zoom, that's pretty amazing. I've taken some moon shots on here. They look really insane. You also have some filters you can do. And one of the things that shocks me the most is really strong selfie quality. I really like how the skin tones look on this phone. They don't show too many um, imperfections on your face. It's a really pleasing aesthetic, in my opinion. Some people call it too soft. I pretty much, I really like it. Also, you have the hand gesture where it can kind of detect your hand. I don't know if it's going to see it here. And it's, yeah, there it goes. You can use your hand to take photos. I mean, the thing is loaded. Front facing and rear cameras, they've been superb two months later. So as an owner of this phone two months later, the performance has been really, really strong, mostly in the areas of improved animations. And if you add the good lock enhancements, you can get it even smoother. Um, that's really cool. Also the decks with the good lock, you can make it the full QHD. Just having this chip, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy in here with 12 gigs of RAM, I don't care what I'm doing. This phone, I can't get it to lag. I can't get it to slow down. The only time I notice this phone gets a little stuttery is when you first boot it up and it's loading the system up. That's about it. Other than that, it's basically near perfection most of the time. I will say scrolling and animation still looks smoother on some other platforms. Um, Samsung has really improved over the past, but for some reason, they still look not quite as buttery smooth as like iOS. But maybe that's because they're a little faster, not as um, maybe slow looking as those. I don't know. There's just something to it. The overall feel just looks slightly less smooth for some reason. But that's not really a complaint. Overall, the phone has been incredibly fast. I have zero complaints about performance. That's really weird to say because I would always love Samsung phones like Galaxy Note 5, 10, whatever but they were never like the fastest but now i feel like this one is actually snappier than an iphone 15 pro max for example and two months later with the s pen i feel like it was overshadowed this year um by you know the ai features and it, it kind of feels more niche or niche or what niche whatever you want to call it this year it feels more like that like a niche product because the phone itself, you know, has the AI, it has the great camera, the big battery, and you kind of don't think about this much unless you this is what you bought it for, which I don't think is everyone. But the cool thing is that you can definitely take notes, obviously, on this big display. And if you want those features, you have the pen up community, you can write on the calendar, you can use this to circle search as well. So that's going to help out as well. So pretty cool. There is a ton you can do with the S Pen. And also you can take photos, like if you're in the camera and you wanna use S Pen to take a photo, you can go ahead and do that. And also in the lock screen, if you wanna go ahead and leave a memo, you can go ahead and pull this out before you unlock the phone. You can say, get some milk, um, cheese, um, fruit, veggies. Like you can just write stuff you need to get for the day. Go ahead and pin that to the lock screen. And then you don't got to go ahead and open up the phone every time you need to see something. It'll be pinned right there. So the usages of this, if you think about it, are pretty insane. What I mostly use it for was to jot down notes and to kind of use it as a mouse for scrolling through. Um, so, yeah, like I say, I think it was a little overshadowed, but it's still a very, very good feature. And an important one for this phone is it's one of the last phones with a really strong stylus experience. I hope they don't get rid of it, though. Two months later with the charging speeds, they've been pretty acceptable on a 45 watt Samsung charger. They're nowhere near a OnePlus level, but they're fast enough. It doesn't charge slow. So I haven't really had a major issue with it. It charges slower and gets warmed up on certain wireless chargers, but Samsung official ones, it works pretty well. Battery life is good enough though that I'm not thinking too much about charging speeds too off. The audio performance has been very loud as well. I'm not gonna play a super loud sample right now. It's really early in my building right now, so I'm not gonna do that, but this thing is very, very loud. Um, definitely with the Dolby Atmos enabled, I've been very happy. I feel like I don't even need to bring one of those little speakers with me anymore because this thing is loud enough when you crank it all the way up to the top level. On and here. also, I'm really a big fan of the really good call quality, the Wi-Fi performance, the speed of, you know, connectivity with the Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.3, 
the phone itself just really works good in this area as well. So if you're looking for a really strong reception strength phone, a phone for a phone, you know, 5G, all that good, all that good jazz, this is probably the top phone out there. I also like this extra dim mode. I've been using that quite a bit, but also the Dex. I have really been going to town with Dex this year. I've been using it more. Um, it's super easy to connect and the phone with the good lock enhancements, there's a good lock feature that allows you to get the full QHD Dex. Basically takes your phone um, to a computer level. It's pretty crazy. You can do this with all the S24 line phones, so it's not really exclusive to this phone. But when you have that kind of premium feel day to day, plus you can add this to your desktop. It's pretty cool. I really do enjoy it. Is there anything that I look at this phone and say, come on, Samsung, what the heck are you doing? And the truth is, is there's not a ton. They've actually done a really, really fantastic job here. Um, I don't like the fact that it's still 6.8 inches. I mean, this is the ultra, so they've had that for a while. I know some people might disagree, but I want to see 6.9 or 7 inches. I, I know most people who use these phones want a large, large display, so I want to see it a little bit larger. I'm not even kidding with you. I know it sounds ridiculous as this is already huge. But it's the same size as been for years, so I kind of want a bigger screen on this phone. Also, the lack of an SD card is super annoying considering my Samsung Tab S9 Ultra has a SD card. Like this is a super big separator, but I don't see them going back to that as they don't tend to. Uh, then they can't upsell you for the larger storage. But I wish this thing had SD card support. I also think some of the images, like I said earlier, can be a little bit over sharpened, so that can be a con for some. And I really, really strongly believe this thing is cumbersome for a lot of people. I have really big hands, and even for me, I feel like it gets cumbersome after a few days. So if you have small hands, this thing is going to be an absolute monster that you cannot handle. Um, so that might be a problem. I also don't really like the bloatware that comes with Samsung phones. And what I mean bloatware is there's Samsung apps, Google apps, like Microsoft apps. It just seems cluttered. It just seems a little messy to me. And it's just too much going on for people who like a more minimal experience. And the final thing I notice is that sometimes, not in the video, not during, sometimes when my fingers are greasy or if I'm going too fast in my day-to-day -day tasks, I can miss the fingerprint sensor or to tell me to wait a little longer. So sometimes the convenience of not having a face ID or something like that, like a super secure biometric face unlock is annoying. While this does have the face unlock with the camera, it's not the most secure method and I don't feel very safe uh, using that when out and about versus the fingerprint. So I wish we had a little bit um, stronger biometric face unlock, kind of like they used to do with that laser. I think it was like a laser face unlock on the top, like an IR or something. Like so that. two months later, I would be I'm lying to you if I told you this wasn't like the king or like the best phone on the market today. The iPhone 15 Pro Max is right there with it, but I, it just doesn't, it doesn't succeed. It doesn't go beyond it. It's not better. Like straight up as a phone, as a straight up product, as an objective statement, I cannot sit here and honestly tell you that. Even as somebody who loves the iPhone 15 Pro Max, I can't say it's better than this. Better is subjective, but when we're looking at hardware for hardware, feature for feature, like, come on, it just, it just doesn't beat it. But we'll see what happens with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. We'll see what happens when iOS 18 comes and they bring AI features. But um, for now, if you love the Samsung S24 Ultra, I think you did a great uh, purchase here. And two months later, I've been incredibly happy. I'll let you know if anything changes, maybe at six months, four months from now. So stay tuned for that. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.